Hello everybody, welcome to new ecology class. Today we're going to talk about biotic interactions. We mentioned this a bit in previous uh, presentations, but today we're going to talk about it in more detail. My name is Dina and I hope you all enjoyed today's lecture. So for the beginning, as usual, we're going to do a little recapitulation of the previous knowledge. What we learned so far is the distinction between biotic and abiotic factors and as an ecological factors ruling in nature, saying that abiotic factors are chemical and physical properties of the environment. Uh, then we got uh, the idea of the ecological balance, which would be the tolerance of, of these abiotic factors mentioned before. Within those limits, you, there is something that's called a species ecological balance. And then by uh, the range of that balance, we had this division of univalent and stenovalent, uh, meaning that widely adaptable and uh, really strict with the, the environmental conditions. Then we talked a bit about uh, stress uh, concerning the adaptations to, to changes in the environment and then we started with biotic factors and that is something we're going to continue through the whole today's presentation. So biotic factors, actually biotic interactions, which is basically the synonym, they can be cited and re reciprocal, they can be mandatory and facultative and they can be positive, negative and neutral. And this slide is only there to so you can understand the next slides because there will be a bit, a bit of sign language so you can understand it and uh, memorize it better. At least uh, was for me it was much easier. So this is the little table I made so you could understand it better. I made the, the order by my own subjective memor memory, but you can of course make it any anyhow you feel comfortable with and easy to understand but what it is important is that on the left side you can see all the names of the different interactions between uh, living creatures in the nature and then next to columns are ex explaining the interaction so benefits or or negative sides of the interactions between two species so one column is for one species the other is for the others and so you have positive and negative sides of it all of these namely predation, parasitism, competition, mutualism, symbiosis, commensalism, amensalism, and neutralism. We're going to mention one by one. And I put symbiosis here as a separate column, even though it's a part of mutualism, and we're going to talk about it more in detail. I put it separately just because it's probably the most known interaction, and to remind you guys that you actually know probably most of this stuff. But just to have the, the specific knowledge we need for this subject. So... For the beginning, there is a neutralism. In, in many books of ecology, it's not really considered as an interaction, even though it is most common in nature. So it is an interaction between species in which none of the species have anything to get or to, to, to lose in that interaction. It means that those species are not really in uh, some close contact or any basically kind of interaction. So, as you see, it's written zero, so none of the species have anything to do with the, the other one. As an example, I put uh, bears and leash, so not, nothing really they're, they're sharing, not, not much to talk about. Then competition. Competition is really often interaction in the nature, and it's bad for both sides. So both species are, are losing something. In this case, it can be intra or interspecies, so it doesn't have to be a species, but in, in, in an individual. It, usually it's uh, interspecific because different species are fighting uh, around the same resource they're using, they have similar eco needs, um, so similar valenza we said, ecological valenza. The solution for this problem is to make a different specialization. So this means that you start eating a different plant or live in a different area or search for food in different part of the day. These are two pictures for actual pictures of two nice examples. So on the left side you can see a sparrow hawk and a regular hawk. They differ in nesting plan while one is nesting on the branches of the tree the other is nesting on a rocky area, so 
So even though they have similar food preferences, they solve this problem with different nesting areas. But on the right side, you'll see rhinos. So they have basically everything overlapping the area they live and how they live. But what is different is that the, the black rhino on the picture above is, um, is grazing grass while the white rhino is browsing the trees, leaves from the trees. That's how they made the specialization, so they, their niches are not overlapping. Again, both, both, uh, both subjects in these interactions are on the loss. Just to mention that between the situation of intraspecific competition, so it's within the same species, what happens, uh, it happens in the moment of overpopulation. So we have, have too many individuals living in the same area, they, they are on the stronger ones are surviving, and that's the part of evolutionary mechanism of a survival. Next interaction is mutualism. This is completely opposite of, of competition, so both sides are uh, in a plus you know, from this interaction. There are two types, so you can be symbiotic or non-symbiotic. What this means is that symbiotic is that when species are, or individuals are really relying on each other and they cannot really live without uh, existence of the other, of the other symbiont. And non-symbiotic is uh, the relationship where also they're depending in the cost of survival from each other, but only in, in one crucial period or specific in the life of a symbiont. Good example for the first one, the full symbiosis, is for example Lishi, Lish and they are a combination of, of algae and, uh, and moose. And the, the life form as it is, the Lishi would never exist without the combination of two. Uh, for non-symbiotic uh, example, bee and a plant is a, is a great example. So they do exist without each other in your, every other life uh, form or, or life task. But they would not exist without each other's help in that certain moment or a certain, certain task. A matter of survival. Here you can also have uh, examples on the pictures with uh, ants and aphids. So ants are taking care of aphids. They are protecting them, for example, from ladybugs. They are helping ants to to get the sweet nectar from the the plants that our ants feed on. Uh, there's also coral, a good example of a sem full symbiotic relation. So they are in symbiosis with the flagellates, microorganisms in the sea, which give the corals their color. But what they do is more important, they provide food for corals, and corals provide shelter for, for their symbionts. Then mycoris fungi are also a nice example. So those are, are fungi that live in the roots of, of regular vascular plants and they are widening the surface, the area of roots so the plant can suck in more nutrients from the ground but on the other hand everything that is left over can be used for from fungi to, to use as a, as a food, as production. Okay, next is, uh, there are two, so amensalism and commensalism and they're also opposite, that's why I put them Together you can easily easier it's easier to comprehend and to remember. So amensalism is a relationship where one one side has nothing to gain or to lose from a relationship, but the other side is losing. Weird. <laughs> but what it is is really simple examples as goat stepping on, on plants while walking or eating so it doesn't eat all the plants that goes by but it's stepping on some is destroying them so goat has nothing to do with that relationship in the matter of gaining or losing on the other hand the plants are, are losing quite a lot the more specific 
Example would be allopathy. Allopathy, um, allopathy is a process in which one organism is producing something that's destroying the other one, but it has nothing for him to gain from that process. So it's not doing for protection itself or anything similar, but it's just like a loose product of it that is harming or something else. One really known example of this are antibiotics. So antibiotics is when one living creature is producing a chemical that is destroying the other living creature. Then the other, the other good example are allergies in humans. So it has nothing to do with plants. I mean, plants don't really care about it, but it, it's harm, harmful for people. Uh, on the other side, the common solism is when one side is has nothing to do, good or bad, with the relationship, but the other side is gaining. So one is neutral, the other is in a plus. The two pictures of a nice example, one is the puffins, the little bird. They lives in the... When they move to these islands, they are gathering for nesting. They use uh, holes, rabbit holes, which are, are abandoned by rabbits. So the rabbits are not on any loss. On the other hand, puffins are in plus. And the other picture is about the whale and um, barnacles and whales. So barnacles, they stuck to whale and they are traveling around to a new more nutrient ground or whatever they do need and um, but the whale is feeling no harm or benefits from that relationship for the end we have predation and parasitism in the both cases one side is in the plus while other side is on a loss predation is more active and parasitism is um is, let's say less active interaction so the difference is that the predation, uh, one side is feeding on prey, while the, uh, in parasitism, one side is feeding on a host or use it as a host. So this is prey, this is host. They are both well adapted to their role, but on the on one hand, uh, pred predators are well adapted in their more physical way, like to be more active or strong, fast. The other hand, parasitism, are usually adapting in the way of their digestive systems or the hooks they're using to as a mouth aperture to, to suck on their play, prey or actually host and so on. Parasitism can be actor and the parasites, parasites depending if they're inside of the body or outside of the body of the host. It's a really a delicate, delicate relationship uh, because basically they cannot survive without each other and what happened is happens is that um, if you destroy the balance, it's really hard to get back. So if the overpopulation of predators, they're gonna be less less prey, and then it could lead to less predators because of the starving, or they can switch to another prey, which usually didn't have that specific predator for their natural enemy. So the balance is really thin. And, and, and it's really delicate and it's really easy to fracture and hard to to regain, to, to put it back on their feet. This is all for today. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.